I was gonna say, is there is there a way to find that fine line between what things will get you hired and fired then mm -hmm. later on in jobs? Because when we talk about social media, so many companies are using that as a way yes. to figure out whether they sure. want to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. When we talk about being authentic, we talk about putting stuff out. Mm -hmm. what's I, that fine I line? think we all inherently know it's kind of what will get us fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wait, don't post your drunk <laughs> pictures of drunk and debauchery. <laughs> You know, I mean, we come on. Well, we, we all know this. We know this, after we we, this, we know <laughs> this okay? Um, <laughs> for me, your friends with cameras. Yes. If, I, <laughs> if I was hiring someone, and people often ask, oh, you mean, are people going to look at my online, my social media when they go to hire me? Yes. yes. And you yeah, should yeah. want them to. Yeah. Because what it does is it grounds you out as a person. Mm -hmm. Now they know much more about you than right. just what was in this narrow little resume, right. the one hour they spent with you in the interview. They know more about you. Right. As a hiring person, I would be so much more comfortable mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. someone through their social media as well. I would feel much better about the choice I was making because I just simply would know more about you. See, and that's the same thing as for an entrepreneur. Um, that's the whole point, is having people know you before they walk in your door, mm -hmm. right? The know, like, and trust factor. That's exactly what, when I'm coaching, is I want my clients' audience, their friend community, their Twitter community, to know them, their you know, clients, patients, whoever they are. So by the time they actually walk in their door or actually meet them one-on-one, -on -one, they already know enough about them and that you've gone past that initial, you know, it works in either world. Social you know, media is really acting in, a, in the place sort of as a personal reference, yeah. seriously. I mean, LinkedIn, they have a recommendation section on their software so that people can write recommendations for you and get to know you again ahead of time. It can, it can be the re best resume you've ever had. You guys have talked a lot about you know posting information, personal information, business information, but when it all boils down to it, we've got entrepreneurs here in the audience and those who may be seeing this, this video when you post it later, they're gonna to wanna to know, how can we turn all of this chat, all of this talk, all of this gossip, all of this into sales? How can we convert it from an idea, a concept, into something that's viable, it's tangible, and it's green. As I mentioned, I booked, my, I booked computer consulting off of Twitter. Yeah. I answered a question that was posed by one of the people following me. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I'm running. Well, someone I was following, obviously. But we had a little, oh, gosh, it's doing this, this, and this. And I go, I know exactly what that is. I've learned that before. You need to do X, Y, and Z. And he goes, oh, my gosh. I, I've been working on this for a week trying to solve this problem. I got all these other problems. Can you come out and help me with this? The fact is, by sharing what you know, by showing people actively what you do and how well you do it, they will gladly pay you money to do it for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more about creating value. Mm -hmm. So you're it's not, all about you're not it's, you know, it's that, they call it pull marketing as opposed to push marketing. You're not pushing yourself onto them, you're pulling someone into your sphere by creating value, showing them what you're worth and what you have to offer. The same would be true whether you're a solopreneur or a job seeker. If you're pulling, you know, if those, if the HR people are out there looking and they're seeing that you're creating a lot of value around a certain subject matter and that's the job they want to hire you for, mm -hmm. they've, I mean, you've already showed them that they're, that they're bringing all this expertise to their team, you know, that kind of thing, so. Mm -hmm. Content, and what, what we're all talking about is content is king or queen. <laughs> and even more so on the content, because this is how you monetize this, mm -hmm. right? Is, and I love this part of, of social media and personal branding, it's about the emotional resonance that you're creating in your content. Because people will take action based on the emotional content that they're reading. So it's being very selective with what you're posting. Now, yes, there's gonna be just some conversational topics, you bet. But when you're able to create, and I call this being a digital storyteller, because it's mm -hmm. really what you are, yes. okay? You're a digital storyteller in these mini blog posts, or mini posts, and the more emotionally compelling you can create your content, the more people will connect with you and then want to take an action. Now think about that, when you're watching a movie, um, when you've seen some, a picture and it touches you, right? What happens? You typically either want to take an action, you want to do something about that. And that's what you want to do with your expertise um, that is on your fan page. And as who you are as a person, it could be any topic on your personal page, whether it's philanthropy, whether it's a recipe, 
whether it's your family, your friends, your um, dog, your cat. You know, people are led by their emotions. So, well, what, if you get a, what if you get a negative emotional response? And then how do you handle that? In fact, you might. Yeah, um, you're building a body of expertise. And even if it's a negative emotional response, it, it's one, a response mm -hmm. that you can gauge mm -hmm. and that you can check against. You know, do I need to change or is this person just, you know, having a bad day and feeling like venting on me? You know, there, there are people out there who just, they just love to vent. <laughs> and, and I will say online, the majority of stuff that you get back, there will be maybe a kernel of truth in there, but a lot of it is venting. Yeah, and uh, you do need to realize uh, Definitely. That. So you need to gauge it like any other criticism against, and that's the purpose of building a body of work, knowing what you're all about. Uh, having the employment come to you and a lot of times I just gauge it against well what good am I doing you mm -hmm. know who, whose lives have I touched who, who has commented on this piece who has said I've you know one person who I wrote an article on an examiner he's gotten a lot of sales and a lot of you know feedback because I wrote about him on examiner so it's like you gauge your body of work and the good you've done against any criticism. I'm always looking at it to see, okay, what can I improve? What can I do? It's the same thing in teaching yoga. You know, we get critiqued on how well we're doing, whether we're responding to our people, all, all that other stuff, and we make changes and we make adjustments accordingly. But it's about once you build that, once you understand who you are, whether it is as a business or as a person, and you start building that evidentiary body of work, that's what stands up not the negative commentary. See, what, what I find is when you, when you build the right audience and you're very selective who you're bringing in, I, it's rare ever that I have any negative postings or my clients and, and friends because when you're with the, the of like minds mm -hmm. and those that relate to you, you're not going to have negative people. And once in a while, I you know brought somebody in and they started making silly postings and mm -hmm. I unfriended them. Yeah, I mean, you have that choice, right? right. It's just literally, yeah. it's like bless you, goodbye. And you have the responsibility. You have a re you, you, you are it. responsible to protect yourself. That's and it. Self preservation. Right. If someone is in, if someone were to come right. in your home and insult you in your home, right. you would kick them out. Right. Exactly. The same thing applies online. Being a good steward. I mean, you're being a good steward of social media. And if you're getting a lot of these types, then you know what? You better take a look at who you're allowing into mm -hmm. your community, right? Who, how mindful are you really being? I take very, very careful consideration every single person that I allow into my friend community. Twitter's a different story. <laughs> I'll choose who I want to follow. <laughs> still I, I get a lot of people following me that have no clue who they are, and that's fine, right? But again, that's to me, that's really the... the um, the strategy so you don't get a lot of the negative. Now, I, 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 there, I heard a different side of the question when you asked it too. I went to a different place. Oh. That, that, a dark place. I went to, <laughs> I went to my happy place. No, uh, I went to, uh, there's also the concept of what you're posting and are you, how much negative emotion do you post in your own stuff that you're sharing? And we see a lot of it out there. And you see tons of it out there. Personally, if you read my feed, Every once in a while, you might see the typical, is it Friday yet, type of post, but very, very rarely. Also, very rarely do I review someone or something badly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will praise the living daylights out of something I love. If something is simply bad, I will just not say anything. Mm -hmm. If it's harmful, that's the rare times you'll see me post a negative review mm -hmm. or a negative aspect on something because I believe it's actually harmful. The trouble is a lot of people, and I know we all have people we follow on social media that do this, their feed is one downer after, after another. another, okay? Get them out of your community. It's time, <laughs> sometimes you just, I don't care how close of a friend you are yeah. to them, self-preservation, mm -hmm. you need to get that out of your life. That's right. Whether it's someone you know personally, or whether it's someone who just is in your online community, so that, that, that the negative aspect, I think you can post too much negative stuff, mm -hmm. and you need to be aware of that. Yeah, I see it. I don't, sorry, go ahead. You go. I'm saying I don't necessarily think, I do believe that social media is a conversation. So I don't think, I don't necessarily think that um, censoring it is always a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think if you're going to join the conversation, 
you better be able to take the heat in the kitchen. Yeah. It's particularly if you're doing something that might be uh, even remotely controversial or if you're someone with opinions. Mm-hmm. You're going to have people that disagree with you. I think disagreement can actually be, I mean, it's one of the great things about, you know, living in this country. I mean, we get to disagree with each other and very vocally at that. And I think because it is a conversation that you can't whitewash it. You've got to just, I think a lot of times you just got to go with it. If it's someone who's stalking you and being extremely, I was at a conference once where there was a Twitter, they called him a Twitter terrorist. Mm. And he was sitting in the audience and every single speaker that got up on the stage, he would start these crazy, terrible, awful tweets. And you know they were rolling the Twitter feed for a while, and they they realized they couldn't do that anymore. They 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 had to take it down off the screen. But then the guy who was running the event it was Yannick Silver, is a big internet marketing guru guy, and he got up and stage and said, "You know what? This is what social media is about. I don't agree with what this guy's doing." He was sitting in the room too, and they never did figure out who he was. There was hundreds of people there, but. I don't necessarily agree with what he's doing, but I have to be willing to show up to the game if I'm going to partake in it. I have to, you know what? It's, there's freedom of speech. If he doesn't like what we're doing here, if he doesn't like the speakers, he has every right to say that. And he said, I'm not going to, they were going to call in the Secret Service and try to find out who the guy was and do all this stuff. And he said, I'm not going to do that because that's what it's about. I've got to let this guy do his thing, just like I let all my other, you know, the people that I'm, that I'm having conversations with do their thing. Well, it's a difference between conflict and negativity. What I mean is, is people constantly posting about how their marriage is going to pot, how their children are you know, drug addicted, and that type of stuff. After a while, if you're not talking in that realm, and you know you have people in your feed that do this. I'm not making this up, okay? Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, you have to be very careful of, of what you're feeding out there, too. Because the trouble is you feed negativity out, you tend to get that back. That's very true. So we're talking about like how you how you feed it out two different ways. I'm a downer, or I need to say something negative because it's harmful and it needs, to, it needs to get out there. So that's a value add to yeah. your yeah. part. Right. So that, that's good. It all comes back to what Jennifer said. It's all about value. Yeah. What you say out there should have value. Now, for example, if you're suffering with cancer or a cancer survivor, and your experience can help other survivors. I don't get to that negative. Mm-hmm. That's that's a tiny that there is value inherent in that. Sure. Simply posting about oh god some some negative I don't need to go down that road because it's making me upset already. <laughs> you know just just a constant litany of, of my life sucks. Yeah, there's no value in that I, for I, you I or for your other people. I literally had friends on Facebook announce their divorce oh, <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> That's the type of stuff you really don't want to announce. <laughs> and it brought up a whole litany of questions that they had to shut down. And it's like, you know, that's negative as opposed, and it's not adding value because you're not helping yourself or helping in your community at all. Mm-hmm. But, but, I do, but I do think it's, if you're a whole person, especially if you're doing it if, at just a personal social media presence and really mm-hmm. just your brand, not entrepreneurship, maybe not job seeking, but I'm a whole person and I, there's, there's parts of me that are dark and there's parts of me that are creative and all this. I have bad days. I sometimes, I learned my lesson early on not to get too political on Facebook. <laughs> that just opens a firestorm. But and particularly on my personal, that's why I keep my personal and business separate because with my business, I'm dealing with a very certain, uh, I'm trying to help certain kinds of people do certain kinds of things. My personal feed, though, we talk about everything. It's all up for. I mean, I, you know, my the only talking dang, about yeah, the only sadness, dangerous, though, is gladness. There, there isn't. I don't believe there is a personal. I don't. I. Yeah. I have never been able to separate the two, yeah. mm-hmm. and so that's my. Fear but if there. you're going to be authentic, you cannot be authentic without being a whole human being, and we're not all happy all the time. Is my point. You can't strategize authenticity. You can strategize how you release what you're going to talk about, but you can't strategize being authentic. If you're going to be authentic, you've got to be real. And to be real, you've got to be able to share all the aspects of yourself that are human. You know, if you're going to be honest with your audience, you know. Well, what about the, the person who says, why should I be on Facebook or Twitter? I just want a regular job. I, you know, <laughs> I'm not really... I, I can talk to my best friend if I've got yeah. a problem, or I could go to my pastor or my my uh, my priest, or, or, or you know. Well, well, here's why: you you go where the jobs are, and you know what? Job companies 
employers are now going on Facebook and Twitter to look for their employees. They are. They're not posting on job boards. They're, who advertises in the paper anymore? Papers are dying. They are now on Facebook. You type in Warner Brothers, Disney, uh, you know, Hewlett Packard, they all have a Facebook page that links to their career site, and that's where you're found. My, yeah. my column last week was, how, was finding the hidden job market, and we've talked about this in the past. The, the jobs show up on Monster and Career Path and all these big sites, which I turned to Monsters in my <laughs> column. Uh, but the fact is, so many more jobs are of the variety where the guy goes, oh my gosh, I gotta get a programmer here today. And they start yeah. calling their friends. And you know what? That job never shows up online. That never, maybe shows up online in a personal, you know, personal emails and stuff, but never shows up in the in the monsters. It's it's filled long before it ever gets to the point that they're going to pay money to list a job on one of those sites. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is you want to tie in to those hidden jobs. You want to be a part of your niche. If you are uh, a retailer, if you are a book, an author, if you want to make sure you're in the niche based around your business, so that you hear of these jobs long before they ever get put out to the public. That's where you'll find, I think, the best opportunities and usually the quickest opportunities because you're seeing them long before anybody else does. In my former life as a software expert for law firms, I, for five years, didn't look for a job. They found me because people who knew me, they knew my expertise or word of mouth, and I just got calls. You know, Sometimes I was interested in them, sometimes I wasn't. But for that period of time, I didn't need to look for anything because I was connected into a network of people who, when there was a job available, oh, let's call her. And that's what you want to do with social media. You can follow companies on Twitter or CEOs on Twitter, you know, be begin a casual interaction, you know, with what they post, you know, responding here and there, seeing what their company is all about. And that way you integrate yourself into a place where if you are their fit or you match up with whatever that skill set is, you can go for it. You know, it, this is all about human connection. You know, when, you, when it boils down to who we really are, all of us, we're all the same, we all want to connect. In fact, we, you know, my, my biggest belief about social media, I think as a collective consciousness, I think that we created it because we were craving connection. Mm -hmm. So you have a huge resource regardless of your purpose. I don't care if you're looking for, you know, a recipe or you're looking <laughs> for a home for a dog. I mean, I had a friend of mine in my community. She had lost her dog. And you know how many people came to her rescue mm. on Facebook mm. helping her look for this dog? <laughs> and they found the dog, I don't know if it was an hour or two later, but it was like this again, the digital storytelling. We all got to connect with her, help her out, right? And then you go to something like a job, you know, job search, it is a huge resource for you. I don't care if you're an entrepreneur or a job seeker. Because the first thing you do is you put out the word, hey, I'm yeah. looking for a job, this yeah. is what I do. And if you've been engaged in social media for a while, theoretically, the people who are connected with you already know what you do and how well you do it. Right. Um, there's a great example, a real-world example of, of this, how this works. There's a, a thing called the L.A. Legal Philharmonic. It is literally a philharmonic orchestra made up of people working in the legal profession. Mm -hmm. This can include law clerks, judges, so lawyers, cool. any paralegals, anyone in the, in the legal industry. Mm -hmm. Well, you might imagine that if you're a law clerk and you're playing bassoon next to a superior court judge, <laughs> and that superior court judge needs a clerk next yeah, month, who do you think they're going to talk to? They're going to talk to you because you're right there. You're already in their face. They already know you. That's exactly what social media can do as well. You can be part of someone. They already know who you are, what you do, and how well you do it. And that's definitely one way you can really do social media. Yeah, I mean, I think what you said earlier, Doug, about it being, um, it, what is it? Facebook's up to, last statistic I read was 500 million? What is it? 750. Yeah. Oh, 750. Yeah, so it's the what largest country in the world now? Oh, I, I, it's, I don't know. It's bigger than many of the countries in the world now. And, it's you know, a buttload. For me, it's, like I've, it's brought all sorts of people back into my life that I hadn't talked to in 20 years. And, you know, people say, well, that's great, but who cares, you know? Uh, but the reality is I have no idea. Well, first of all, it's created all sorts of wonderful 
opportunities and experiences for me to, to catch up with people that I haven't seen since high school. Um, but I mean, you have no idea, like, like we're all talking about up here. I, I was in entertainment for 20 plus years. I never got one job from a job site. I got every single job from word of mouth. And my husband, who's an editor, has gotten every single job he's ever gotten word of mouth. The few that he has gotten calls off of, like realitystuff.com or whatever, they always end up being really weird, awful jobs that he doesn't want anyway. So it's like, it's that word of mouth, it's that, it's the network. And if you guys are on Facebook that has 500 million users on it, A, it keeps you, it keeps you authentic with the times. People want to know that you're up with technology, that you know what's going on. So that helps you with employers. And the other thing is, like Doug was saying, it's a great opportunity for you to start with your own network. Put it out there. What you're, you know, create that ideal job for you. Put it out there. Say, this is what I'm looking for. And you know, one, I'm very your fond one of friend saying, may have ten other friends that work in that industry. I mean, there's all sorts of things. I'm very fond of saying you never know where your next job is coming from. Mm -hmm. It could just as easily come from a job posting online as it could come by talking to that guy next to you at the Starbucks. Yeah. You don't know. You, you literally do not know because you don't know who you're bumping up against right. day in and day out. So take advantage of those opportunities. You, you really can never tell. Um, it's quite amazing the people you meet in any given day going through your life. And there just might be someone there who could be the next step along your career. Yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, we've been talking a lot tonight about marketing and branding and whether that's for a solopreneurial endeavor or whether it's for a job seeker or just a personal brand. If you're a blogger and you're not even trying to make money or find a job, you just want to build your blog stats, you know. Um, and when, in the work that I do with artists, those two words shut them down immediately. Marketing and, and branding are for Coca-Cola <laughs> and Nike. They have nothing to do with me. It's icky. It's corporate. It's greedy. It's money hungry. I don't like it. I don't like it. And one of my first tasks with them is to really, I call it, I like to make up words. I call it de ickifying it for them. And really, the way that we do that is it's, it's two things. And what Marla was saying earlier, I think, is so important. It's all storytelling, which is really fun. And let's think about it, especially if you're an artist. I mean, if you're a writer, if you're an actor, you're an editor, storytelling is it for you. Um, and it goes back to caveman days. We've been telling stories since the beginning of time. So it's storytelling. And all marketing is really doing is just raising your hand and saying, I'm over here. Mm -hmm. I'm over here and I have something to share with you. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is. A blog, a job that I'm qualified for, or a business that you could be my client. I'm just, I'm here. That's all marketing is. All branding is, and like Marla said earlier, is creating an emotional resonance with the job you're qualified for, your blog, or your, your whatever you're selling. You're creating an emotional, you're creating that culture, you're creating that emotional resonance. So when they come in, in touch with your product or service, or you as a human being, they're going to have an immediate emotional reaction. That's all those two things are. And when you really get it down to the brass tacks, not only is it fun, but it's totally doable for anyone because we're doing it on a daily basis every day. What we wear. What we, you know, not that we're, it's not about being superficial, but it's all the choices we're making comprise our brand, who we are, what we're putting out in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, the personal brand part and the emotional resonance. The, the other piece to that is that's how you're able to bring that, okay, you're separated either by your iPhone or your computer between the person and you, right? So how do you get this virtual world? To get who you are, well, that's where the emotional resonance, that's kind of the strategy, the key to that. That's how you bridge that person that you're not physically with, that's how you bridge it, right? And that's where that, that connection. I, I was dealing with a friend of ours who's an author, she just had her first book published, and I hit that wall immediately, which you know, that's, that's, a, people just glaze over and you're like, no, I'm going to do it. Uh, but she was like, I don't know, I don't know, it's marketing and all this stuff. It's like, think of it this way, you're an author, right? You're writing a public journal. That's what you're doing. You're sharing your work. You're sharing about how the next book in the series is coming along. You're sharing about the neat thing you did. You're sharing, about, it's all about maps. Uh, the maps figure integrally in this book, the young adult novel. And it's a, you, you, you're a map fanatic. Talk about maps. There's so much you can write about that is not hardcore car salesman right. sales tactics right. that still benefit you, that still get the word out about what you are what you do, how well you do it, and, and can actually do that marketing, that branding, in a way that is more compatible with your own 
demeanor and your own voice. Feelings. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and the the style. You know, people come to me and go, "Oh, I don't write well." It's like, can you talk? Yeah, right. then just write like you're talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or do a podcast. <laughs> I mean, that's all you have to do when you're writing in your feeds. You're writing as if you're talking. You don't have to be a fancy writer. Right? That you're just talking with people, you just have to be typing it instead of speaking it, right? So well, make it, how, make do you, it how do you time manage all that stuff? Oh my god. Because you've got Twitter, you've got Facebook, mm-hmm. you've got yeah. podcasts, we've got Yelp, we've got Yeah. How do you effectively strategize for your time management? There's a couple couple things. Uh, one is you you're very selective with what you want to focus your time with. Mm-hmm. All right. That's that's the mindset part. I mean there's a ton of what I call shiny silver objects that I do not pay attention to. But that's one is being very selective with and I always stick with the you know some of the four main channels, you know, which networks such as YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, in fact, somebody even asked me, oh, you know, what do you think of Google Plus? And I said, well, you know, I think that's great, fine. However, you want to manage that too? And as well, you know what? As much as I absolutely am a proponent of social media, you know, if that's the wars between Facebook and Google, I'm not going to, right now, I'm really happy with the four channels I'm on. Why do I need another one? That's just my opinion. I may change it a year from now, but I don't need another fit, you know, network to be in, right? Um, but uh, well, 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 For that, I will say, though, MySpace. There's a lot of people who invested in MySpace <laughs> oh, yeah. and it still left it way, it was still way <laughs> too late. So yeah. there, with Google+, Plus, I'd rec- no, one knows, no one knows what's going to be the next hit. Right. So like Google+, Plus, go, go over there, reserve your name. Get you don't have to pay attention to it yet. Get, set yourself up over there. I get the feeling it's going to be important. It, it can't, it's going to. It's, it's going to be. It, I, I think that perhaps it might. Have, maybe you'll either increase your canon by another one to five, or you. you know, I don't think it's going to replace them. Yeah. But it, I'm getting the feeling. Yeah, there's some juice there. So just go over and set up your stuff, and then see how it works out. Again, you may never go back there. Yeah, keep keep an eye on it, but it's. It's, it's not something it's you spend a lot of time. Well, no, you want to streamline. I mean, especially as a, as a business owner. Okay, number one, you want to streamline your time. I never recommend you be on at any given time longer than ten or fifteen minutes, and I give you systems and strategies and what to do so that you do it efficiently. And if you're on longer than that, you know. It's, that's that's your thing, but it's not what I you know suggest. The other piece about saving time is a, a tool. You know, you've all heard of it, Hootsuite. Hootsuite.com is going to save you a tremendous amount of time because you put post. It's based on the 140 character rule. Some of you probably already know about it, and it, you literally send it out all at once to all your networks. It is the most brilliant piece of program. Yeah, I use I use uh, I use Seasonic or Tweet Deck. I do a local level. Tweet Deck. Do you think there's blowback though? Because okay. do you think there's some kind of blowback from the public? Because I'm starting to notice this, where they say, "Oh, that's Boot Suite." That was probably canned two days ago on Facebook. Yeah, on Facebook, and, and it's not relevant because it's something that they didn't really do on the spot. And I think that that needs to be addressed. I find I'm a big fan of aggregators as well. Hootsuite, Seasonic, one of them. Within reason, you know, if, if I'm out of town, I can stack up a bunch of posts and still keep in touch with my community. Or if it's just something I don't have the time, I need to get this out. But regularly connecting with, again, as Doug said, what's your home base? You know, mine happens to be Facebook and my WordPress press blog. And the beauty part about the WordPress blog is that it shoots out to five different networks for me. Mm-hmm. So, again, you want to find the piece of social media that's going to be the most time efficient. So if it's something like LinkedIn or like that, that has a lot of connectors to other, so, other social media software or WordPress where you do one thing and it shoots it out to five other things, go for it. That's the way I manage my time. I don't, you know, people are just like, oh, you spend so much time on LinkedIn. No. I think I look at, <laughs> look at my LinkedIn page once every two weeks, maybe. <laughs> because my aggregator throws it out over there. And the fact is, you can still have conversation. Because the other thing you do is, all the services have the ability that if someone contacts you directly, they mention you on Facebook, they mention you, they, what do they call it on Facebook? They tag you on Facebook, tag. they mention you on Twitter, yeah. they do any of these things. It, it can trigger off an email. So I don't sit there waiting. I don't check my LinkedIn page looking for in my inbox on LinkedIn. I got anything in it? Why bother? I don't have to check the web page. 
when I get, if someone wants to interact with me on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I get an email. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, I'll go back to LinkedIn and I will interact with them there because that's where they're most comfortable and that's where they want to interact. That's fine. But it doesn't mean I have to sit there and you know, constantly be reviewing all these sites. Yeah.